My name is Douglas Robertson. I'm the Chief of Gastroenterology at the White River Junction VA in Vermont, and I'm Associate Professor of Medicine at Dartmouth Medical School in the Dartmouth Institute. I've been asked uh, by Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology to talk about a paper we are publishing there entitled, Neither Long-Term Statin Use Nor Atherosclerotic Disease Is Associated with Risk of Colorectal Cancer. So there has been interest in statins as a potential chemopreventive agent for colorectal cancer. Um, statins are widely used for um, lowering cholesterol and generally have a good safety track record and so might be an attractive chemopreventive agent in that regard. There's also some data, both preclinical data that statins may have an effect on carcinogenesis, as well as observational data. There was one large case control study that suggested statin, uh, statins may reduce colorectal cancer uh, incidence by up to 50%. And so there's been interest in this uh, compound as a chemopreventive agent. And we thought it would be interesting to study this in a large group of Danish citizens. While doing the analysis, we took advantage of the data set to also look at atherosclerotic disease as a risk factor for colorectal cancer. There's been some suggestion that atherosclerosis is a risk factor for colorectal cancer. So again, we took a look at, at that as well. The population for our study, as I mentioned, were folks from Denmark, specifically North Jutland and Aarhus County. In Denmark, individuals are provided with uh, their health care through a tax-supported system. They're all ascribed a 10-digit code at birth, and so as they interface with the health care system, uh, getting prescription drugs or using the hospitals, uh, their use is tracked, again, through this 10-digit code. And so the Danish registries have been proven to be a rich source of epidemiologic resource and we use them here. Uh, we uh, did a case control study. We identified uh, cases of colorectal cancer through the use of uh, coding in these data sets. And we matched up to 10 controls for each case. Our main exposure of interest was statin use. So again, we looked in the pharmacy registries for that. We defined statin use as evidence of statin use with at least two or more prescriptions, again, occurring prior to the development of colorectal cancer. So we're really looking at uh, incident colorectal cancer in our study. We defined long-term use a priori as greater than five years of statin exposure in the data sets. In terms of atherosclerotic disease, we looked at codes that you would be considered consistent with atherosclerotic disease, uh, including things like myocardial infarction and stroke. Um, we, for our analysis plan, we use conditional logistic regression to analyze the association between our exposures of interest, statins or atherosclerotic disease, and our outcome, colorectal cancer. One advantage of our study is that we were able to control for potentially important confounders such as aspirin and nonsteroidal use. So in many other analysis, the, the association is confounded by over-the-counter use of these drugs. Again, most uh, Denmark citizens use their pharmacy database for these drugs, and so we were able to effectively control for those types of confounders. So in terms of our results, we identified 9,979 cases of colorectal cancer and then matched that to 99,790 controls. About 7% of the population had used um, uh, statins, and about a quarter of those statin users were long-term users of the drug. When we looked at ever use of statins, there was a small significant reduction in colorectal cancer risk. There was a 13% reduction in ever users of statins compared to those that had never used statins. However, when we looked at long-term users, those with five or more years of exposure, that association disappeared. There was no uh, statistical association between long-term use of statins and colorectal cancer. Previously in the literature, there's been some suggestion that statins work differently, the individual compounds. So we did look at individual types of statins. The most commonly used was simvastatin. And again, when we looked at simvastatin use, it paralleled our main results. So every use of simvastatin was associated with a small, significant reduction in colorectal cancer risk of about 16%. But when we looked at long-term simvastatin use, there was no association with risk for colorectal cancer. In terms of atherosclerotic disease, we found no association between atherosclerotic disease and colorectal cancer. The relative risk uh, really approached unity. It was about one. And so again, no signal of any association between atherosclerosis and incident colorectal cancer. In some ways, it's a little difficult to interpret our study 
at least with regards to statins, because there was, again, if you looked at every use, there was a small reduction. Uh, however, in case control studies, if you really want to uh, consider the association causal, one of the key links is this idea of dose response. So you'd suspect that longer-term users would have a, a greater effect, and that's exactly the opposite of what we saw here. We saw no trend, we saw no dose response. So overall, we interpret our study as generally negative. So if there was an association, or if there is an association be between statins and colorectal cancer, our, uh, our analysis suggests it's probably small, and again, perhaps um, confounded uh, by some unmeasured things that we did not see in our trial. Uh, but again, not a strong causal link. I think that our results would be consistent with meta-analysis of similar observational type studies that suggest, again, if there is an association, it's a small one. One caveat about our study is that, again, while we have long-term use, we don't have a use that's greater than 10 years. And so if it takes even longer-term exposure, again, 10 years or more, that was not the type of exposure that we could look at in this study. Finally, when we looked at atherosclerotic disease, as I mentioned, we really found no signal at all. So I think that was fairly strong evidence that there's no strong link between atherosclerotic disease and uh, colorectal cancer incidence. I want to thank you for your interest in our work and uh, have a great day.